and welcome to my channel. My name's Abby if you're new. Welcome. So in today's video I want to talk about how to choose the right hamster for you. So in this video I'm going to be covering where should you get your hamster from. Rescues, rehoming, a breeder or a pet shop. And I'm also going to be talking about the different species of hamsters that are domesticated and some of the characteristics of those and so you can look into which one you think will be best for you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So some people do like to home dwarf hamsters together. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about housing hamsters together as I personally think that it's best just to always house hamsters on their own. And the reason for this is that hamsters at any point during their lives can become territorial and then this can lead to them fighting. This can cause serious harm to either one or both of the hamsters and this can even be fatal in some cases. Cases. Personally, I would not like to take that risk and so I don't recommend ever housing hamsters together. I always recommend housing hamsters on their own. They don't get lonely but they can get stressed if they are territorial with another hamster. So personally, that's my opinion. So if you would like an animal that's like small and cute and fluffy that does like to live in pairs or groups, I would recommend looking into gerbils or into mice something like that which does actually love to live in groups even guinea pigs although they are a slightly larger animal they do need more space <laughs> i just thought i would add in some other options if you are looking for an animal that does like to live in a group so with that out of the way let's dive into where should you get your hamster from so the main options that i'm going to be talking about is rescuing and rehoming that's kind of one topic and also getting getting a hamster from a breeder or getting a hamster from a pet shop. Rescuing or rehoming hamsters can be a really lovely thing to do. It can give a hamster a second chance at life. You may be taking them from somewhere where they have really bad conditions to then giving them all the love that you have for them. And it can be really nice to rescue a hamster. One of my hamsters is a rescue hamster and she is called Peaches. Peaches has a slight lit a little hole even in her ear because she is a rescue hamster and she was fighting with another Syrian hamster. Now Syrian hamsters are always 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 solitary so they should never be housed together but she does have a hole in her ear from that and she is honestly the sweetest hamster. I absolutely love her to bits. So with rescuing and rehoming there are kind of two sides to it. So there is the rescuing side which is taking a hamster which is maybe previously been in a bad situation and giving them a new home and then there is hamsters which are just being rehomed so you may see these on Facebook or on rehoming websites and a rehomed hamster might be that someone's moving house and their new landlord does not allow pets or it could be that someone's financial situation has changed particularly with the pandemic and the moment I know a lot of people have been rehoming hamsters and other small pets due to that so if it's just a rehome situation that person may have given that hamster a really good life up until now and they may be completely tamed and really happy to be handled and everything like that they may be a really good hamster for a first time owner they may be really easy and you can look out for rehomed hamsters on facebook on facebook groups there's like hamster rescue and rehome and then also on on things like Gumtree, Pre-Loved, Pets for Homes website and then also with rescue hamsters. So like I said rescue hamsters are generally hamsters which have come from bad situations whether it is neglect, maybe it's someone who's got a hamster for a child, maybe the child was supposed to take care of the hamster and didn't take care of them properly, um, maybe they've been grabbed by a child, maybe they've been dropped and um, you don't necessarily know the background of rescue hamsters so 
they can possibly have behavioral issues they can be quite shy and they may need a lot of time and work but it can be a very rewarding experience if you do have that time to give a hamster to really form that good bond with them and then to see them come out of their shell can be a lovely experience but it may take a more experienced owner or an owner who has a lot of time and patience so that's just something to think about um you can get rescue hamsters again off these same websites like pets for homes pre-loved gumtree spot facebook groups like hamster rescue uk things like that or there is also you can look in pets at homes rescue center and other pet shops may also have a rescue center also the rspca in your local area or any other animal shelters wow that was a lot of information so i'll try and be faster with the other topics so another option for where you can get your hamster from is from an ethical breeder i personally think that ethical breeders are a really good option for someone who is maybe a first time owner ethical breeders will breed to have really healthy hamsters and to have hamsters with a good temperament and not only that but they generally will handle the hamsters from a young age so they should be very easy to tame and they are unlikely to have many health issues obviously there is always a risk with any animal that there could be health issues but ethical breeders do do their best to try and breed healthy hamsters. A negative about getting from a breeder is that you are not supporting the adopt don't shop. However, I personally believe that it is important for us to have ethical breeders because then they can continue to produce healthy hamsters and I do think that's good for domestic hamsters as a whole. One negative about getting from an ethical breeder is that you may have to travel for that hamster. They may not be directly close to you you may need to drive for an hour or so to collect your hamster however it may be worth it if you have a really loving really friendly really tame hamster which lives a happy long healthy life so the next option for where you may get your hamster from is from a pet shop getting a hamster from a pet shop can be super controversial so i'm just trying to stay objective as i speak about this getting a hamster from a pet shop is obviously a very accessible easy way to get a hamster and pet shops will often have a variety of different species and different colors and things like that so you will have a lot of choices if you do go to a pet shop to get a hamster however unfortunately a lot of chain pet stores in particular they will get that hamsters from rodent mills and if you don't know about rodent mills i do recommend looking it up before you decide to go down the pet shop route small pet shops small independent pet shops may not they may breed hamsters themselves but hamsters which are from rodent mills the parent hamsters do have a pretty sad life they are in extremely small enclosures and they will be bred and bred and bred their entire lives back to back without giving that hamster that parent hamster any breaks and it is very sad the conditions that they can be in also when you are getting a hamster from a rodent mill they don't necessarily look at the genetics of the hamster and so this can cause them to have health issues and neurological issues which may shorten the hamster's life or lessen the quality of life for that hamster however i do understand that it can be sometimes hard to find a hamster in your local area which is not from a pet shop particularly if you live in say a more rural area if you do want to go down the pet shop route i would recommend looking at independent pet shops and asking them about where they actually source their hamsters from a lot of them will actually breed their own hamsters so it is worth asking them about that or also just ask in a pet shop as well if they do have have any rescue or rehoming services and I would opt for that over one of the hamsters that they are actually selling. So the next part of the video is going to be about what species of hamster you should get. So a big misconception about hamsters is that they are different breeds of hamsters like you get different 
breeds of dogs but actually hamsters are not different breeds they are different species so this means that they cannot breed with one another so you can't get a Syrian dwarf hamster or a Chinese Syrian hamster they cannot be interbred at all so the first species of hamster that I want to talk about is a Syrian hamster these are also known as a golden hamster or a teddy bear hamster so a Syrian hamster is probably the most common hamster and I think that is because they are the biggest hamster they are cute and fluffy I mean all hamsters are cute and fluffy if you ask me but they do have like little teddy bear kind of faces and that is why sometimes in pet shops they may be called a teddy bear hamster I personally have a real love for Syrian hamsters I have two they are a larger hamster and they are also slower than the other species so this means that they are easier to handle and they can be easier to tame and I also think that they are very friendly and full of personality they also come in a variety of different colors and different patterns and they also come in a long hair and short hair however these hamsters can be very demanding they are probably the most demanding out of all of the different species they need to have a lot of enrichment and a very large cage otherwise they can get very stressed and show signs of this through things like bar biting and pacing the cage so they need to make sure that they have a lot of enrichment so it is something to take into consideration how demanding they actually can be of course every single hamster is different so me saying that Syrian hamsters are easy to tame you may get a shy Syrian hamster there could be a hamster who's had a bad upbringing or it could just be that they are genetically more shy in general General, they are quite easy to tame and they are usually a very friendly hamster so the next hamster is a Chinese hamster I personally have hardly seen these near me they seem to be one of maybe the least common hamsters they look almost like a little mouse they are very very cute they are not technically a dwarf hamster although they are very similar in size they are generally very docile and very easy to tame however I do not have personal experience as I have never owned one myself however some can be more skittish than others Chinese hamsters don't really come in a large variety of colors unlike Syrian hamsters and they also can be a bit faster than a Syrian hamster but not maybe as fast as a Roborowski hamster so the Roborowski hamster is the smallest hamster they are teeny little like pom-pom hamsters they are very cute however Roborowski hamsters may not be the best pet if you say have children who might want to hold them because they are not only the smallest but they are also the fastest hamster so this can make them hard to handle although not every single Roborowski will be hard to handle as well as this Roborowski hamsters are generally more shy by nature so they can be a lot harder to handle so they can be a lot harder to tame than any of the other hamsters on this list and so sometimes Roborowski hamsters will never get to a point where they actually enjoy being handled so they may sometimes just need to be an animal that you enjoy watching and not actually holding and handling yourself but they are a very very sweet animal and I'm not saying that no Roborowskis can be tamed but it is possible that you may get one who is very shy and very skittish. A Roborowski hamster, because it is so small, you do need to be very careful with the cage that you put them in because you need to make sure that the bar spacing is small enough that your Robo cannot escape. So that is something that you need to make sure that you look into if you are getting a Roborowski hamster. I possibly would recommend getting a tank because then there is very minimal risk of them escaping. The last species of hamsters is actually kind of two hamsters however these hamsters 
have been hybrid. This is a Russian Campbell's Dwarf and a Winter White Hamster. Now in captivity, these have been interbred so much that it's very hard to find one which is just a Russian Dwarf or just a Winter White. So I've kind of put these in one category together because if you are getting one of these, they are likely a hybrid. They may look more like one or the other, but they will likely be a hybrid. Russian Dwarf or Winter Whites are very cute hamsters. They have little round bodies and they are so cute. They are very small, but not quite as small as a Roborovsky. They can be very quick as well, but they can be easier to tame than a Roborovsky hamster. They may need a lot of taming, but they can become a very friendly, lovely companion animal. Russian Dwarf Winter White hamsters do come in a variety of different colors and different patterns and they do look very cute and they can look very unique. So that is everything that I have to say in today's video. I hope that you enjoyed watching. I hope this video is helpful to you and has started to give you an idea of how you are going to choose your hamster. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment which type of hamster is your personal favorite and hopefully I will see you in a new video soon. Bye!